I will be taking over the webinar today. This is uh, Naveen Prithiani. I'm the analyst for UrbanForex.com, ForexWatchers.com, and the CEO of Black Tower Investments. Um, since we are talking about price action today, and I am taking over the webinar last minute, any requests on what you guys want to learn in terms of price action? I know a lot of you guys are um, longtime followers of mine on UrbanForex.com or uh, members of mine from ForexWatchers.com. Any, any preference, any uh, request, and we can make this a on-demand uh, webinar for you guys. Okay, uh, John Dwight says uh, trading without indicators. Andred says pro strategy. Okay, let's do this. Why don't we discuss the current live market um, based on price action? Okay. Okay, we have some uh, questions on exhaustion candles, legit and illegit. Uh, Sardar Udin is saying um, advanced prostrating strategy, reversal and continuation. Okay, I'm going to give you guys some tips today that uh, actually I discussed in my conference room with uh, uh, my members. Um, how many of you guys that are attending today are actually uh, my interns from UrbanForex.com? Okay. One... Two, intermediate, three, four, okay. So we got several of you guys who are my interns. And how many of you guys are actually uh, part of the conference room uh, from forexwatchers.com or members of my forecasting? Not yet, not yet, me, okay, great. Okay, so we have, we have a good mixture of people uh, that are already with me. Um, and how many of you guys are new, have never heard of me before, and are just uh, have just come in today? And okay, okay. So it looks like we have some people from there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna teach a technique here. We can't be discussing uh, uh, pro techniques and everything quite yet, as we have a lot of uh, uh, new people in here uh, who have not. Um, learn any of my strategies before or are not members of any of my websites but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you guys a trick today a, a little technique that will save your trade okay and we're gonna do all of this with price action and a pivot point we're not gonna discuss exhaustion candles or any of that stuff I'm gonna teach you guys something that none of you guys have uh, heard before except uh, conference room members from forexwatchers.com we've uh, actually gone through the stuff today so let's get into this detail and forget the past. We're going to discuss the current market. Okay, let's let's get into it head on. All right. Now, um, if there's any questions, let me know live. I will stop. I will discuss it. I'm going to make this interactive. I'm going to call out names and I'm going to have you guys interact with this. Okay. So this is a learning webinar, and um, I will also record this. It is actually being recorded, and it will be available. Um, on uh, YouTube and uh, Urban Forex uh, in due time. So there we go. Now, this candle right here, I'm gonna, let me move this chat screen here. Boom, there we go. Looking at Euro USD right now on the one hour time frame. I always trade the one hour time frame because it gives us enough time to filter out stuff. We have uh, an hour for this webinar. I'm not gonna go into much details, but I am gonna discuss. Uh, particular stuff um, in terms of um, currency pairs. Now, for those of you who are new, I, I look at seven currency pairs that correlate with each other. Correlation basically means um, it's, uh, it's a relation that one uh, currency pair has with another, okay? In the Forex market, if you're just trading one pair, it's useless. It's useless. You will never, you will never get through with it. You have to look at the market as a whole, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys first, to begin with, I'm gonna give you guys uh, uh, the seven currencies. Um, Ahmed is saying, Naveen, what do you do when you have two exhaustion candles opposite to each other? Okay, that's an advanced question. We'll, we'll discuss that later. Abby is saying, Naveen, are you still there? It seems I have lost you. Uh, can everyone still hear me and see my screen? Yes, okay. Um, let me turn off the beeps. It'll drive me crazy. Just a moment here. Um, 
Okay, the beeps are off. Okay, we, we got a really large attendance here today. We got like 74 people in the room here. So, um, okay, let's move it on, move it on. Let's go back to uh, our charts and we'll, we'll continue from there. Um, all right, now, Euro USD. Let me show you guys a little technique. I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually predict the market. You know, I'm talking about a prediction to a level where you know what's going to happen, not just in the upcoming hour, but in the next two, three, four hours. Okay, you can actually start drawing what the market's going to do. Okay, um, this is a little bit similar to how I do my forecasting, and I'm actually releasing this information, and I actually charge for this, but because uh, I have a service about this. But I'm going to release this information because it's caught me at the wrong time, and Mr. George is not here today, and. I want to give you guys something useful that you guys are here and it's, it's worth your while. Okay, here we go. Euro USD. This particular candle that we see, okay, it's a sharp candle. It came all the way down, gave us a large tail right here, and a also a large body. A body is the filled area, the red thing that you see. A tail is that skinny long stick that comes out. I call it a tail. Okay. Um, the, Correct terminology is a wick, okay? But let's call it tail for the rest of the evening. Now, this particular pattern that we're looking at is what we call a continuation pattern. This means the market went flying down and it, it pushed back up, but there is a lot of strength still to go down. A tail will always tell you a story. The tail will tell you what the market is trying to do, okay? how much pressure there is, how much movement there is. Every candle in the market is an indication. The only difference is that where the candle is located is what, what makes the difference. Okay, so this particular candle gives us an indication that the market is gonna continue going down short. Okay, there is strength to go short. The next candle opens up right here. This is the opening of the next candle. Okay, what it does is it moves down a little bit, probably hovers all the way back up, bounces off of its nearest resistance, okay? Once you break through a support line, it then becomes resistance, okay? So consider these lines that are drawn on my screen. These are pivot points, but consider them as walls. These walls try to hold the market in, okay? Look at them as walls. So this wall holds, traps the market and pushes the market back down. This right here is what we call an upside down exhaustion. Okay, what it, what it means is that you have the body on one side of the candle and you have this large tail on the other side. Okay, if I put my arrow on the body, you get an idea which way the market is heading. So what do we have now here? First thing first, we have a, uh, a pattern here that tells us the market's gonna continue. The next candle opens up it's going north, okay? It's going north, the average person freaks out, saying oh, the market's turning around, the market's turning around. No, it's not turning around. What it's actually doing, it's doing its retracement, okay? You have a position short that you've taken here at the open of the next candle. How do you know what is the right spot to wait for? Do you put in your stops based on uh, recent high, recent low? Do you put in your stops saying that, uh, oh, 20 pips is good, so I'm gonna put in 20 pips? Or do you actually analyze if the market goes against me, how far will it go? Okay, that is a question you need to ask yourself. So in this particular case, the market goes up all the way till here, bounces off, comes back down and closes here, giving you a trend continuation pattern again, yet once again, next candle opens up, current candle, getting ready to drop. Now, everyone understood this so far? Can I get a yes or a no? Everyone under understanding this so far? Okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, tons of yeses. Okay, here we go. Now, moving, <laughs> Shaw, repeat. Um, Shaw, this, this is recorded, don't worry. And uh, I have several other webinars that uh, talk about this kind of stuff. It's called Pro Trading Strategy. It's on YouTube.com. Um, Okay, now, these two candles are related to each other and they tell you the market's gonna go short. So you short, okay? You're, you're obviously holding on to short and uh, now you're obviously making pips. 
but that's euro usd okay put euro usd aside you've taken a look at it already okay let me write this stuff down for you guys so you guys can see this okay i trade seven pairs euro usd pound dollar um aussie dollar new zealand dollar euro yen and us dollar cad us dollar swiss franc these pairs that i wrote on top they move together these pairs that i wrote on bottom they move in the opposite direction i'm not going to get into details of correlation and how to find it this and that just believe me on this one and just go with the information there's not much time for me to explain this um so these pairs on top they go together so th let's take a look at the other correlating pairs such as pound dollar aussie dollar new zealand dollar and euro yen let's see what they had to say in these last few hours pound okay pound here now remember that pattern i told you an exhaustion this thing here this is an upside down exhaustion when you actually have the exhaustion the right way which comes uh let me show you if i can find you an example when, when you have an exhaustion in the correct way which is like this it gives you an indication that the market is going to reverse but if it's in the direction because if you t again if you take the arrow you put it on the body you know which way the market's going but if this is upside down it's a trend continuation pattern it means there's there for example like this one the, the live one that we're looking at it's basically saying it tried to go up but it couldn't there is so much pressure still pushing it down okay and in other words trend continuation the market will continue to fall so let's take a look at pound pound had this pattern here not really an exhaustion not really an, an exhaustion take a look at this body here this body did not end up closing a little bit tighter if this body ended up closing a little bit tighter in the previous candle we'd have a situation the market would turn around what happens opening of the next candle opens up okay you are assuming the market is going to continue short at least till the next line here it doesn't it goes north okay it's going north you're freaking out how far will it go does a market ever go 500 pips against you no whatever the market does there's always a reason and there's always a distance where it can go to and there's always a turnaround from there so take a look at this market moves up <clears throat> does not go to your current day's pivot line but it goes to your yesterday's pivot line okay your yesterday's wall like we said and let me draw that here boom it bounces off of there comes back down and creates this upside down exhaustion taking the next candle all the way down into this into your profit zone okay so again we understood this part okay euro usd says short pound is saying short still okay let's take a look at aussie dollar now on aussie dollar we had a perfect exhaustion here this is an exhaustion remember that this exhaustion that we're t i was telling you about that's giving an indication for a reversal that's what happens the exhaustion tells you that the market is going to reverse opening of the next candle the market didn't actually go too high too long it actually came back down close and gave us a another exhaustion taking the market down very confusing right you don't know what's going on on aussie dollar so on aussie dollar i'm going to put confusion mess headache Okay, I'm, I'm going to put all the words that you can possibly call this. I'm not going to swear, but I'm going to put all the words that you would possibly look at this. If you were trading this pair, this is all you would say. Because the trade would not end up going in your favor, even though everything is aligned correctly. Okay? You think there's an exhaustion market that's going to go up. It doesn't go up. Why? It's, it's, it's con confusing you. Um... Uh, they're saying the sound is distorted. Um, can everyone hear me just fine? I just want to confirm. Okay, okay. So moving on, moving on. Um, okay, so moving on to New Zealand dollar. Okay, perfect exhaustion. 
next candle market moves up comes back down and closes okay now long slash success this particular long trade went north made a touch and came back down okay you went long at the opening of the next candle on this particular one let me clean this up for you guys here let me okay all right you saw this exhaustion and you went long uh, i'm sorry you went long from right around here okay this is the exhaustion candle which tells you them there is a reversal happening you went long here the market went up it touched your uh, uh resistance line and you made your pips you exited your pips so we're going to write that long and a success let's take a look at euro yen euro yen all right we have the same pattern that we see on euro usd we have this trend continuation pattern that tells us the market's way too strong it's pushing the market down so next candle opens up you sell but the market doesn't go down it goes up it goes past your uh, resistance line it goes higher than that you start freaking out for those of you who have <coughs> who have uh, followed my previous webinars what do you do at this point when you see the market moving live and it's going against you and it's even gone past your uh, re uh, resistance what does that mean do I do anything does it mean anything okay I'm testing you guys now let me see how much you guys pay attention to uh, my other, other webinars Okay, Mark Sanders saying you can wait or bail. Um, Brian, I, I will go through uh, the exhaustion. In fact, uh, there is another webinar that discusses the exhaustions um, very precisely. Uh, Wasim Khan says wait till stop loss hits. Rebecca Austin says depending on your money management strategy. Jay, first answer that is correct. Jay is saying wait for the candle to close. Okay. Always remember one rule of thumb. Until the candle is not closed, the candle means nothing. This particular candle that is running right now looks like the market is going to reverse, but I can't tell anything about it until it's closed and I have a certain direction. Because it's moving and we all know in Forex, things can happen in a matter of minutes. Correct? So if that happens, how do you know if I make a decision based on what I currently see and the next minute or two minutes something else changes? Always wait for the candle to close and to make your decision on closed candles. Okay, so by the time the candle closes, the market comes back down and closes here. Now you're smiling. Aha, uh -huh. the market's going to continue in my direction. It wants to go short. Boom, the short continues. Okay. Let's take a look at US dollar CAD. Now these are supposed to be opposite of uh, what we are doing in the other pairs. So let's take a look at US dollar CAD. Now, let me clean all this for you guys. And there we go. We have a, a uh, exhaustion here. Next candle, we sell. Okay, and this is the opening of the next candle, we sell. The market comes down. It touches your uh, support. You close, you make a profit, and that's that, okay? So, you go short and success. But then, by the time the candle closes, you understand that the market wants to go long because it's a trend continuation pattern, okay? And the market eventually, you see, it goes long. It bounced right off of our resistance. It went higher, but maybe looks like it's going to close below it. So that went long, but that's later. That's fine. I'm, I'm getting to a point here. Okay, just hang in there. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching a point where I'm going to show you guys what this all means, how you can put it together, and how you can forecast. Okay, now moving on to U.S. dollar Swiss franc. U.S. dollar Swiss franc. Now, U.S. dollar Swiss franc. We have an indication that we have a trend continuation pattern for a long based on this candle. Okay, this is simply telling you the market just wants to go long. Trend continuation pattern plus the next candle opens up and it goes immediately. The first thing it does, it goes down. You 
By the rule of thumb, you wait for the candle to close for it to tell you exactly what it's going to do. It never closes below their resistance, so you know the market's still in your favor. Comes back up, closes as an upside down exhaustion, which means a trend continuation tells you the market still wants to go long, giving you an indication that you can hold. We're still going north, okay? Long. So now, what is the overall look that we see here? We have a short, 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 and a long. We have a little confusion here. And New Zealand dollar and US dollar CAD eventually told us that they're going to go in the same direction with the rest. You have an idea in the market right now that things are going to go your way. Now, now, now here is <coughs> here is the part where you can nitpick the market to precision. Let me let me get into this guy. If anybody's confused at any moment, um, stop me. Okay. Now. Euro USD. Once you see this pattern here, the market was going down, opening up the next candle, you short. The market goes up. Okay, market is going up, reaches this area. Right? Now, at that time, what are our pairs that we had success with? Take a look at New Zealand dollar. Okay, New Zealand dollar didn't tell us the market is going to go down. It actually told us the market is going to go up. What do we have here? Euro USD is telling us short, but New Zealand dollar is telling us long. This is what we call anti-correlation. That's fine. That's fine. It happens. There is anti-correlation all the time. But because you looked at all of these pairs, you know that the overall direction of the market is down. But we have some long in the market. We have some different directions temporarily. What does that mean? New Zealand dollar is telling us that it wants to go long. If you had monitored the market at that moment, the moment New Zealand dollar hit this area, at the same time Euro USD, it was hitting this area. It is only going, the the market is only going to get a better price. That's all it's doing. It's not reversing on you. It's retracing to get a better entry, a better price. As you practice this, you will get more and more precision where when the next candle opens, instead of selling here, what you will actually do is you'll see, oh, New Zealand dollar is actually saying long. Once New Zealand dollar's long is finished, I'm gonna sell my Euro USD which means you would have entered then around here somewhere because now it makes sense. This gives you pinpoint accuracy when to enter the market to a point where you don't see the market fluctuating against to even 50 pips and you're taking seven pairs, eight pairs together and suddenly you see 300, 400 pips on the table right in front of you. Okay, so when you have a anti-correlation Embrace it with open arms. It, it's actually telling you, I'm giving you a chance to take a precision entry. Okay. All right. Um, Ahmed is saying, can you repeat, please? Mark Sanders is saying, does anti-correlation result from uh, fundamentals influ influencing a particular pair? Um, Mark Sanders, don't even worry about fundamentals. No matter what the fundamentals does, at the end of the day, it will come back and follow what the price is originally wants to do. You can see the fundamentals on your charts, like live, okay? And even with the fundamentals, the market cannot go to a certain extent. It only can go to a certain extent that is planned, okay? It's, this is not like the stock market um, where you can have something crash overnight. No, it doesn't, work, it doesn't work like that. There's paperwork that needs to be filed and needs to be processed. Everything is planned, okay? Lisa saying, uh, can I please repeat anti-correlation? Okay, sure, sure. I'll repeat and I'll, I'll explain anti-correlation. And uh, Clayton is saying, could you repeat, please? Okay. And I'll go over this one more time and I'll use different pairs as examples this time. Anti-correlation is simply this. Let me clear all this out. Oops. 
for some reason. Okay. This is a, these are the pairs that correlate together, all of these pairs. Basically, what it's saying that all these pairs on top, they go in one direction always. And these two pairs on the bottom, they go opposite always. Take a look at Euro USD. You see how in the last five, six hours, it's going down? Pound. Same thing, overall direction is down of the last five, six hours. Now, these pairs that go opposite US dollar CAD, that means the last five, six hours, instead of going down, it will go up. There you go. Last five, six hours, it's going up. Same thing, US dollar Swiss franc. Last five, six hours, it's going up. Overall direction, these guys will always correlate in the long run. Every now and then, in the short term, the immediate um, short term, you see an anti-correlation where certain pairs are telling you they want to go long, but a correlating pair will say, I don't want to go long, I'm going to go short. That means one of them is going to get a better price. It's going back to get a better price. That's all it's doing. It's, it's going to fetch a better uh, price to fill in. Um, does that make sense, uh, Lisa? For uh, And that's one with what we call anti-correlation. Okay, good. Uh, Mihaly, um, can we use gold as positive correlating pair? Um, gold, yes, is a correlating pair that works with these. However, because it's a metal, be cautious. Because Gold ha doesn't have a history of correlating with these pairs in the long run. It's only been having a history in the last three months or so. And sometimes it has weeks that it's on and off. But uh, these pairs have a history together going back two years, three years that they work together. Okay, so th there's a stronger correlation between these. Uh, the metals have a correlation. The metal is just a additional risk, but with risk comes reward also so if you're willing to take the risk when it's in your favor you make tons of money as well okay so that's why we can add in gold if you'd like to put in that additional 20 percent risk all right now <clears throat> giving going back to repeating this thing taking an example now let's take a look at uh what was it uh all right Let's take a look at Aussie dollar, okay? At this particular time, okay, where I have my arrow. Let me delete everything so I clean up the chart for you guys. At this particular time, we, we have the exhaustion. We know market is headed long, okay? If you guys follow my um, other webinars, you guys know for a fact that there, uh, we always watch our pivot lines from last three days, okay? From today, yes, uh, the day before and the day before that, we have the next pivot line is right here. And you can see how the market goes up, pinpoint touches that, turns around. It never ended up to today's pivot line. Okay, so a lot of gurus tell you to trade pivot points, yes, but they, they forget to mention, or maybe they don't know, they, that there is significance if you use the pivot points from the past okay so um kenneth is saying so is it safe to say the anti-correlation pair will have to follow overall direction at some point yes it, that is safe to say but which of the anti-correlating pair will follow that's what we're discussing right now you will obviously have one pair going up one pair going down when you have anti-correlation but which one will follow and how do you know which is the right direction so let's go over that right now. So <clears throat> now we have this we have this current uh, exhaustion. It wants to go long, right? Let's use another pair that correlates. What goes with Aussie dollar? Does Euro Yen go in the same direction as Aussie dollar? Yes. Okay. Good. Now Euro Yen works with Aussie dollar. What did Euro Yen do at that time? At that same time, if we actually look at it, Euro Yen told us the market it wants to continue down. This is not an exhaustion. It's telling you that the market wants to continue to go down. 
So, what do we do? We have the opening of the next candle on Euro Yen. We don't sell. We wait. New Zealand dollar. The next candle opens up. We don't sell. Uh, we don't buy. We can wait. What is the overall direction? The overall direction. How many pairs are actually saying sell, sell, sell? Majority, right? Majority is saying we're going to go down. So you know the overall direction. <clears throat> okay, the overall direction is short and long for these opposite pairs. Okay, you already know that. What happens is you wait the next candle, once it goes up and it touches your nearest pivot line, this is when you become a tiger and you watch all your pairs and you will see them. You will actually see in front of your eyes. They're all bouncing off of resistance at that time. And now is the, is the, the proper moment to enter right here. This is right around the time that you will see that New Zealand dollar has touched. It went with the exhaustion. The exhaustion held true. And then you enter with precision going short with everything even New Zealand dollar once it touches this area you short from here you don't actually take a long you actually short and you gain these pips along with all these pips that are currently running okay um, is there an indicator to give you the pivot points for three days yes there is go to urbanforex.com and uh, there is a uh, menu on top that says forex strategies once you click on that, there is a strategy called Pro Trading Strategy. The pivot point file is in there. Just attach it to your uh, MetaTrader. If you do not know how to attach it, there is a video that, ex that goes over a tutorial. Okay, Ali says, shouldn't you wait for a close? Ali, yes, you should wait for a close. But now we have, once you've waited for a close, see, Ali, there, there's two things, okay? When you have a running market, you, you're making a decision based on the running market. No, that's different. You should always wait for a close. But if you're waiting for the market to do something exactly what you want, you don't need to wait for the close. You're actually waiting for the market to do what you want. Does that make sense? Okay. Shaw says, uh, does anti-correlation mean that all pairs are seeking better entry points? Um, no, there is much more theoretical meaning behind it, but for the sake of speculators, for those of us who are just wanting to trade and, and pull out some profit out of the market, stick to that definition. So yes, it is just seeking a better entry point. That's all. Okay. So this is how you get precision in the market. If you were to have taken this trade, which trade is running right now, you would have had massive, massive pips right now. We're talking about probably 400 pips in your pocket just by trading the seven pairs. Forget all of that stuff. We're, we're 19 minutes until the close of this candle. I'm gonna see if I can push this uh, um, a webinar for additional five more minutes over the hour to show you guys what can we do with these candles? What does it really mean? So, based on what I've already told you guys, forget uh, anything you've learned, just based on what I've told you guys today, let's, let's look at this stuff. Um, uh, Shaw is saying, where is the entry on the New Zealand dollar again, please? Right here, this exact point here, where you see it bouncing off of resistance. You know for a fact from this particular candle, New Zealand dollar is going to go north. It goes north. And because you have an anti-correlation from New Zealand dollar, you know that Euro Yen might be affected by it. So you don't trade, you wait. You know overall it's down, but you wait. You wait for the market to give you a precision entry. This market goes up at the same time as New Zealand dollar goes up. And as it touches resistance, this is the same time your Euro Yen will touch resistance. This will be the same time Euro USD will touch resistance. Okay, Wasim Khan is saying, can we consider candle volume to identify true or false exhaustions? You cannot measure volume in Forex. There is no central exchange. There is like the New York Stock Exchange. You can measure volume there. 
you can measure volume in forex. It doesn't have it, it doesn't work that easy. Okay? The only way you can measure volume is broker to broker. A broker can tell you how much people are buying and selling. That's about it. Okay? All you have to do is look at these patterns and you'll find out what's going on. Now, as of right now, what do we know? What do we know right now? Okay, let's take a look at all of this stuff now. Let me remove everything, clean up the screens here. Now, all of the stuff that I'm training you guys, what happens is five minutes before the hour, you look at the stuff calmly. No need to rush. You calmly look at all the stuff. It takes you five minutes. It might take you five minutes over the hour. That's fine. But that's all it takes to do all this. Okay, you, I, the average person eyeballs the market so much to make 10 pips of scalping, 20 pips of scalping when you can spend one tenth of that time to make 400, 500 pips out of the market. Okay, Clayton from Perth is saying, just to be clear, do you enter the trade when the tail touches the pivot line? Yes. And at that time, it's not the tail, at the time, it's the body. Okay. And yes, at that time, it's still a risk, but it doesn't, your risk is more defined because you, it's an analysis. Okay. So your risk is more controlled. Can it go against you still? Yes, it can. Anything can happen. But if it goes in your direction, you have pinpoint accuracy. Okay. And it will go in your direction 80 to 85% of the time. Now, moving on to the current market. Okay. Let's do that analysis together live. Okay, let's take a look at it live. Let, let's, I'm gonna make all of you guys answer this stuff and see what you guys, see how you guys can analyze. Stop guessing. There's no need to guess. It's very easy to analyze the market. No more guessing. Okay, no more relying on indicators and signal services and all that nonsense. Watch the market. Do your research, it's very easy. Now look, we're looking at Euro USD right now, right? Um, let me move this a little bit so we can see the whole chart here. Three days worth of data we need to always see, okay? Three days worth of pivot lines. This is one day worth of pivot lines. This is yesterday's worth of pivot lines and day before. We're on the one hour time frame. We're looking at Euro USD. Now, market is currently heading short, okay? It's moving short, candle is currently running. Now. Based on what we see, we have a small tail on top and a bigger tail on bottom, which means we are starting to get some pressure from the bottom pushing north. Means sooner or later, this short term movement that's, that we're holding on to is coming to an end. Okay? Just keeping that in mind, let's move on. Okay? Is, is it an exhaustion right now? And um, based on what you see, is Euro USD an exhaustion right now? Does it look like it's an exhaustion? No. Okay. So, still short, but slowing. Okay. Shaw is saying, are there times, uh, oh, sorry, one second. Are there times uh, when the market is all messy? What do you do then? And how often does this happen? Of course, the, uh, the market's messy all the time. I'm sorry, let me mute my phone. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, of course, uh, the market gets choppy, and it happens all the time. Uh, you can ask my conference room members um, at forexwatchers.com. You know, we sit there hour after hour, bored, nothing to do, because the market's all sideways. You know, so, um, yes, at that time, what you do is you just, you just stand aside. You just stand aside. Uh, I'll go over that if I can uh, find some examples for you. I'll go over that. Uh, Walter Prevail from Dominican Republic saying, uh, how about stops once we have an entry after pivot points? Okay, let me ask you a, a very uh, controversial question. Why do you want stops? Okay, when, when we discuss stops, the fear is anything can happen in the market. I'm going to tell you this now, anything cannot happen in the market. Okay, even if there is a catastrophe there is only a certain amount the market can go into until emergency procedures are kicked in from different countries to save a currency. Nothing can happen suddenly overnight and then a currency goes, okay, we were the strongest currency, but now we're zero. 
doesn't work like that. Okay, there are emergency procedures. If you do not remember, not too long ago, Swiss franc had to devaluate the currency to keep up with the world. They announced that earlier, before it actually happened. Everything is planned. Everything has paperwork again. Everything goes through in front of your eyes. Okay, um, next question is how uh, Mark Sanders, no, but it's hitting the day three pivot point. Okay, it's hitting the day three. Okay, Mark, very good uh, look. Okay. Nothing on day one. Why did it bounce around here? That's the, not, nothing from yesterday, but three days ago, or on the third day, we have a line here. Okay, it's bouncing off of this. All right, so now we have some more information. Support. All right, so it's still, sh still short, it's slowing down, and we have support. All right, um, Shaw, um, regarding stops, I, I will have to make another webinar and I will go into detail, like absolute detail on stops. It's basically what we're doing now, but we, if you reverse it, you know where the market is heading for a stop and you know when to exit your trades because you know the market is going to turn around against you. Now, um, pound, let's take a look at pound. Is it an exhaustion, the current candle? Okay. No, it's not an exhaustion. Same situation, still short. It's a very strong uh, body. Look at the size of that thing, that seems huge. Very strong, strong body, but it's slowing. Look at the tail on the bottom versus the top. Big tail on bottom, small tail on top. Okay, but slowing down. And support, with support. There's one support here, which obviously it's crossing, but it's struggling. Maybe it might go above it before the end of the hour. But this support from yesterday, it's holding. Take a look. This support is so strong, it used to be resistance. Resistance, 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 boom, it crossed above it, came down. Support, 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 and again support. There's so much strength on this line. There is significance on this line because it holds true in the past and in the current time frame. So this area is significant, so, so support also, okay? Let's take a look at Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, would you have taken profit at the line like that? Yes, I would. Seeing how, how strong that line is, that would have given me a, a place to exit. Why? Take a look at this. Take a look at how, how low is Aussie dollar. Look how low it went. Okay, pretty much to here, right? Our three days ago line, correct? Do you see that? It's maybe a pip away if I, if I were to pinpoint put the line, it's a pip away, okay? But Euro USD touched its support. Pound touched a heavy support. At the, at the same time that all of this happened, you would have the maximum pip potential to exit the trade. And then you see all this bouncing happening, bouncing off of these lines. You would care less because you've exited at the pinpoint absolute most peak. Okay? Again, this only works when you look at multiple pairs together, not just one pair. One pair is boring and it's not reality. Reality is when you see all the pairs together because a lot of these pairs have that one common word inside of it, which is called US dollar. It means there is something moving the US dollar and it's affecting all the currencies. What's happening? Close your eyes, doesn't matter. Forget that. We're here to make a profit, not to change the economy. Okay? Now, moving on forward, we were looking at Aussie dollar. Sorry about that. Uh, we're looking at Aussie dollar. Is this an exhaustion or is this a, a pattern that you think the market will continue short? Okay, good. Okay, it looks still short. Um, no indication of slowing down because take a look, look at the tail on the bottom. It's not that big compared to the tail on top. I mean, it's, it's okay, but it's not strong like the others. So we have still short and support. Okay, 
So chances of Aussie dollar continuing short is still high. New Zealand dollar, let's take a look. New Zealand dollar, yes. Bouncing off of resistance, still short, not an exhaustion. Same situation, still short, slowing, larger tail now, and support. Euro yen, let's take a look here. What do you have on Euro yen? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, now look at the strength of Euro yen. Look at the size of that candle. Look at the size of that tail. Possible exhaustion. Okay, I'm not saying this is a confirmed exhaustion, but it's possible. Okay, it's a possible exhaustion plus support. It's bounced off of yesterday's support line. This is the extreme, and you can see absolute to the pip. It bounced, and now it's bound like it's it's retracing. Okay, going to our uh, pairs that go opposite. U.S. dollar CAD. U.S. dollar CAD strongly long. Is there resistance here? Are we at resistance on U.S. dollar CAD anywhere? No. Take a look. No pivot lines at the current market that we were at. No pivot line yesterday. No pivot line day before yesterday. Long, still long, not slowing, no resistance. Okay, US dollar CAD is telling us that it's still got steam, it still wants to keep going, it's not tired. Going up, US dollar Swiss franc. Okay, we have a different story here. Is this an exhaustion? Is this clear enough to tell you that the market's gonna go short? Is this an exhaustion? Um, Kenneth is saying, can you add or subtract two or three pips from the pivot lines because it's not exact? Um, of course you can. Of course you can. Um, you can use a uh, ballpark and uh, some of the pairs will eventually hit. The reason why we say ballpark is because um, every broker uh, manipulates the price of the market slightly. Um, along with that, your pivot points are calculated at a GMT plus zero or the server time from the broker. Some brokers are at GMT plus one, some brokers are at GMT plus two. So your pivot points are calculated, so they can be slightly off, but overall you get the same idea, you get the same direction. Okay, you get to understand where the market's going. If you have any doubts, just go onto fxpro.com, download their MetaTrader and just use them. Um, I've been using them for quite some time now and uh, no headache at all. Oh. By the way, if any of you guys are opening accounts with FX Pro, please, please use my link. Uh, we, we do get commission and I, I, I provide all of these services for you guys because of that. So don't go and open an account without me. All right, now, um, US dollar Swiss franc. Okay, it's heading long, right? Um, it's heading long. It's uh, resistance right there. Okay, it's almost at resistance. No indications of stopping and a little bit of slowing. So still long. Um, resistance okay it's pretty much at resistance it's like only two pips away uh, FX Pro is not available for US customers I'm so sorry Shaw about that it's uh, as of right now it's not available um, okay so what do we have now what scenario do we have okay take a look has the candle closed yet There we have three minutes to go till the close of the hour. Has the candle closed yet? No, candles has not closed. Look at Euro USD. It's trying to push and close below the pivot. Look at pound. It's doing the same thing. It's pushing. Look at CAD. It's all the way. It's pushed all the way up to the next um, resistance. Swiss franc pushing above it. Aussie dollar, still at resistance, uh, support, I'm sorry. New Zealand dollar, pushed below it. Now, what does this push mean? This push is excellent. Now you, now you predict the future. Now let's sit here and predict the future now. What is going to happen? Next candle opens up, for example, on uh, uh, New Zealand dollar. Let's say it opens up around here, right? 
a candle always has to retrace. Uh, John saying, what is the reason you go back three days worth of pivots? Um, it's, uh, it has significance. Uh, don't worry about the reasons why. It has strong significance. There's not much time for me to explain it because we are short on time, but uh, it has significance. Don't worry about it. Take my word for it. Um, Brian from Singapore trend would continue. Okay, yeah. So if you open the candle at the next, uh, right around here on the next, uh, I'm sorry, the next candle opens up here on this line. It first has to retrace. No candle sharply just goes in its favor. Let it do its dance. Let it go down and up and down and up. Doesn't matter. Once it goes up and it touches its nearest resistance, which is now, this has now become resistance if the candle is going to close below it. Okay. If this touches as resistance, then you take a look at all of your pairs and see are the rest finished um, bouncing, <clears throat> finished bouncing off of their support and resistance. If so, time to get a precision entry to take a short because everything will go short. Okay, so one minute to go to candle close. <coughs> we've done our <coughs> sorry, sorry. We've done our analysis. Next candle is opening up. We know when the next candle opens up, we're not going to immediately take a trade. We have to wait. Take a look at pound it's pushing below it, right? Wait, just wait. Sixty seconds to go. We've done our analysis and we still have a minute left. Grab a bottle of wine. Enjoy yourself. Okay. There we go. Next candle opened up. It's going down. This is the time people start freaking out and they start selling. You don't sell now, you wait. Okay. This can take, this can take maybe 10, 15 minutes. Let the market do its dance. Because it's very rare that the top of a candle is flat on a trend continuation. This is a trend continuation pattern. It's telling you the market wants to go down short. It's very rare that the top is flat. It has to retrace. It has to give you a tail. So if it does give you a tail, now let's start predicting a little bit. If it does give you a tail, how big of a tail can it be? A few pips, right? Right here. You guys see that? How uh, the tail can be like this big. Let's take a look at our other pairs. Okay. Here. If it moves up, our nearest resistance probably would be the low of this candle where it bounced off from because this has been bouncing, bouncing, bouncing because it cannot go all the way top to this level because that, that does not match with pound. This is too far. Pound only has a few pips while Euro USD is going too far. Impossible. Look for something closer. And this is something closer. And this makes more sense because now it, it agrees with what Pound is trying to do too. Well, we have two pairs. We finish our analysis. Move on to the next pair. Okay. Where can the US dollar CAD retrace to? Do you see any indications? Too much headache, too much work, too choppy. Leave it alone. Don't even look at it. Take a look at US dollar Swiss franc. Okay. Too close. We need a few pips like pound and the rest. Move it down. Take a look here. So we have some space here now. Also, it's the same space is the top of this candle, which is going to act as our resistance. Now, <coughs> Aussie dollar. Okay. Now, before before we, we, we go on to the rest, understand one thing. How big is this tail here? Is this tail big enough to tell you the market is going to continue north? This one that uh, has the red uh, arrow. Is it big enough to tell you the market is going to continue north? Yes, it is. How about the next one? Is this big enough to tell you that the market has so much pressure to continue going north? No. Now the tail got smaller on the bottom. And look on top, look how big the tail is on top. It's telling you there is pressure on top. So your chances of this current candle that's running, that tail to be very long, the chances of that are slim. Because there is not much, for that to come all the way down till here and go back up and close means 
That's a big tail from here to here if we go to the, our next pivot line. That means the market has way too much pressure to go long. That's impossible because we know for a fact, based on our analysis, it cannot go that much. The market is coming to a halt. So, a little bit of retracement and we're good to go long. Okay, Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar is on its way down. Okay, created a little tail on top. It's on its way down. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let's move on. New Zealand dollar. Okay, a few pips will be right around here. You can see how this level has been holding quite some time, plus at the low of this place. It gives them a few pips. Euro yen. That thing no longer is an exhaustion. It became a trend continuation pattern. A few pips. Let's move it up a little bit. That would be its few pips. Okay, let's take a look at pound. That was our pair that we were watching, and Euro USC. Now it's just a waiting game. That's it. That's pretty much how you do your analysis. You wait for it. You know the market's heading south. How far it's going to head south? You can tell by these tails. If the tails are sharp enough, you know. This tail, big tail, right? You know the market's not going to go down short forever. The next candle opened up, but we had a uh, anti-correlation, which tells you the market is halting temporarily. Wait for one candle to go up, and then it continues short. And boom, you had a massive drop after that. Just, just think when you look at these pairs. Just try to put the pieces together. Right now, it may sound difficult, but um, as you put these together, um, day by day, for at least a month, I would say, it becomes uh, instinct. You know, it's, it's like driving, like I was uh, telling in my conference room today. It becomes like driving. You know, when you first start driving, you pay attention to everything. You know, your left signal, your right signal, your speed, uh, everything. How you're braking, how you're accelerating. But the moment you get used to it, you know, you, you're like watching a movie and text messaging while you're driving. And you don't care about driving. You just do it naturally. So, um, Shaw, uh, do you calculate how many pips to next pivot uh, before you take your trade to make it worthwhile? Yes, yes, that is always that is always an uh, indication. But you can still take the trade. If you know the trade is going to go in your favor, if you know the direction, take it. Take those pips. Why waste them? Take them. Okay, when you do your analysis in this particular way, the chances of a trade going in your favor are quite high. Quite, quite high. Okay, so just go ahead and take the trade and they will go into your favor. Um, now, you will always know by your tails how strong the trade is going to be. If the tail is too big on the previous candle, you know the market's coming to a halt. It cannot go in a home run. But if you have patterns like these, like this one and this one, you know the market will continue. There is some strength, there is some steam left. Okay, and the market's gone. It did not retrace. It did not give us a precision entry. It did not retrace. That's fine. We know the direction of the market. It's still short. We already predicted that. It's still short. We're not worried about that. All we wanted is a better entry. Okay, you wait. Always be safe. Wait for the entry. Wait for the precision. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to wrap it up right now. Everyone understands what we've done so far. Okay, uh, Mark Sanders, I have a Forex Watchers question uh, trying to coordinate the time zone. What time do you generally release your alerts? Um, my forecasts from ForexWatchers.com are released uh, before London Open, which is like around, uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, two, around 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I release them. Um, the conference room is only uh, London session. Um, I'm in the room trading every day, uh, not, not really trading, but just giving analysis. I don't trade anymore um, uh, with the conference room members. I just interact with them and make them do the analysis. Uh, Clayton from Perth is saying, will this webinar be on uh, on Urban Forex? Yes, it will be. The links again, please, for the replays. Uh, the links for which replays? Um, for Forex Watchers or um, this particular uh, webinar? Uh, Lisa, how do I get started? Which um, can you please elaborate, Lisa? What you're asking about uh, to get started on what? Uh, Clayton, this webinar will be available next week. 
Uh, Lisa for beginners. Okay, if, if uh, you guys are beginners and those of you who don't, do not even know basics of Forex, we have an internship program on urbanforex.com that has three levels, basic, intermediate, and advanced. For those of you who want to learn analysis, who actually want to learn to do uh, what I do, what we just did live, that is on the conference room at forexwatchers.com. Um, and there is a little bit of... Uh, uh, fee there. I'm sorry. It's a little bit expensive there, but then uh, urbanforex.com is really cheap. Uh, most of the stuff is free. I give everything I can as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> uh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. So I hope you guys understood and you guys know now how to look at the market, how to predict what's going to happen in the market, how to know where the market's going to halt and stuff like that. Um, Ahmed, uh, Naveen, we are not getting homework quiz for the internship. Uh, I, I will release them today. I've been very busy. Uh, guys, tomorrow there will be no forecast or conference room. Um, I will not be there. I am flying. I'm going to be in Singapore for a couple of days and I'm going to be in transit. So I'm not, I'm not in the office tomorrow and the after tomorrow. Um, what other broker men, brokers do you recommend for U.S. customers that you can credit for? Uh, I do not have any brokers I can recommend for U.S. customers because I do not uh, have any links with them. However, drop me an email. Let me do some research for you. Uh, even if it doesn't credit me, I, I, I will see whatever I can help you with. No problem. Um, message me on Urban Forex. Uh, Ethan Shore from Israel. You're very welcome. Uh, can you explain where to get the indicator again? Let me show you. If you want the indicator, you go to urbanforex.com. Okay, I'm going to go there live with you guys. I'm going to show you guys where it is. Uh, Okay, you go to urbanforex.com, you click on Forex Strategies right here on top. Once you click on Forex Strategies, sorry, let me move this. Okay, then you click on Pro Trading Strategy right there. Once you click on Pro Trading Strategy, you will have uh, the videos and all the recaps and how many recaps we've done, uh, the comment section, blah, 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 it's all there, but and here it is, pivot indicator used for pro trading strategy. You can just click that and there it is. Um, is this where the conference room is, Rebecca? Yes, the conference room is done on this software. Um, I Conference room is only for three or four hours every day. Um, it's, it's not really a conference room. What you're actually paying for is the forecast, but I just throw in the conference room as a bonus so you guys can learn to analyze the market. Um, I don't actually know in pounds. You can just go to forexwatchers.com and you can check it. I think they can convert it for you in pounds and stuff like that. Uh, will the last pro trading webinar be on this page? I missed it. Yes, it will be. It will be on this current page that I'm showing you guys. Um, I just haven't got a chance to put it up on YouTube yet. Sorry. Um, does the pivot points work for MetaTrader 5? Uh, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Uh, it does not work for MetaTrader 5 apparently. That's what I've heard. Uh, I could be wrong. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the night, guys. Uh, I'm it's eleven <clears throat> it's eleven eleven here p.m. right now. I need to go get some food. I'm really hungry. Um, thank you so much for attending. I'm really sorry that Mr. Uh, uh, George was not here to do his uh, webinar. Uh, link for the conference room is here. It's uh, forexwatchers.com. Okay. Uh, think like a banker. Oh, sorry. Uh, the think like a banker webinar that I've done. Um, that was at Forex Pros. Uh, w w that one they didn't record it. Uh, so I'm so sorry. I might have to do one more webinar for you guys on that, where it talks about psychology, um, how to control your trades mentally. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending. Um, do I have seminars in person? Yes. If you actually go to my website, NaveenPrithiani.com, I. If I do seminars in person, I list it there. I've done some seminars in uh, India. Um, I think I've done, uh, what, uh, three in Bombay, um, like around six in Bangalore. Um, and uh, that's about it. That's, that's all I can remember right now. So, but I, I do webinars, uh, seminars in person too. Okay, very welcome, Jason. You're very welcome, Peter. Welcome, welcome. Have a great night. Thanks for coming in. I will see you all uh, probably on Friday. I'm not in tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Take care. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye.